Okay, so I'm back in my car here, boys, and um, I wanted to actually revisit something from the past that, that didn't actually sit well with me, and uh, I've done a wee bit of reading, and I hope I can clarify it, because I kind of had mentioned it in a previous video when we were looking at the CAN bus signal. I had mentioned briefly that we are going to take a look at the K-Line, and as I was working through the uh, the video... I couldn't get any activity on the K-Line, I couldn't see it, so I kind of abandoned it and never did mention it in the video in the past. You may or may not have watched that, but this is the point to this video, and there's one other item um, I want to speak to as well. So, I've got the two channels set up because we're going to look at the CAN bus again. Uh, this time I'm doing it on the PicoScope, as you can clearly see. Uh, previously it was on the Hantec, but uh, I'm doing it on the PicoScope for a reason. Uh, more on that in a, in a minute or two. Uh, so... I'm only interested in uh, channel uh, A at the moment here, boys, which is the uh, the blue channel. So um, right now, I've got my data link connector. I've got a couple of different um, uh, leads hooked up. I've got the two channels hooked up so we can see both sides of the CAN bus. Right now, I'm only interested in the K line. That's why I'm actually pinned in to pin 7 on the uh, DLC breakout box. And you can see simultaneously, I actually have my V-Packer uh, actually hooked up and again, uh, that's there for a reason as well. So in the past, I looked at the K-Line. Uh, you can see I'm hooked up. The ignition is actually on. And you can see there's nothing happening on the blue line, right? So I'm thinking, huh, I guess I have to dig a wee bit deeper on this in the past, right? And that's why, as I said, that's why I abandoned it. So let me just minimize this for a second, right? You can see in the background, I've actually got the V-Packer running. So what I'm going to do is actually scan diagnose system, and this is an auto scan, right? So the system is actually, check the status light, you can see it blinking there, it is actually interfacing with the car. Let's go back to the Pisco scope, and you can see the K-Line there. I hope you've seen it briefly there, boys. You can see there is, in fact, activity on the K-Line. So this is probably not news to you guys who know what the hell you're talking about, but the K-Line is only active when there's a diagnostic of some function being performed uh, on the vehicle. So it's interesting that that's how it actually works. I, I didn't realize that in the past, unless there was an active diagnostic function going on. And you can see the auto scan was in fact going on with these, what, uh, six modules. And I'm in the SX4, by the way. I'm not in my Vitara. <laughs> Perhaps I should have mentioned that some three minutes ago. Well, that is to say all the other modules that are on the vehicle are actually diagnosed via the scan tool via the CAN bus. You with me there, boys? So I actually thought that was kind of interesting. So let me just perform that function once again. I have to kind of toggle between screens here, boys. Uh, obviously, the, to get it on screen simultaneously, that's why I've only got the, the, the small, uh, the kind of the, the minimized version of the, the screen, if you will, on the uh, PicoScope. So it's, it's doing a scan. You can see there is activity on the bus line there, the blue line. That is the K line. I'm pinned into pin, pin 7 on the data link connector. So you can see it's actively scanning. So when that activity stops, I think the V, there you go. Then the V-Packer brings up the list. So that's kind of interesting. That That's new to me. That may not be interesting or new to you, <laughs> but it is to me. I'm just trying to further my depth of understanding on the uh, the, the network of the vehicle, boys. I, I read stuff at random times. It, things just come to me randomly. There's no rhyme or reason to it. it I'm just interested in a lot of things simultaneously, and there's really no rhyme or reason to it. But... Anyway, that's the point to the K-Line. A wee bit of a revisit on the K-Line there. As I said, you may or may not have noticed I mentioned it and then kind of didn't address it in a video from the past when we were looking at the CAN bus on the Hantec scope. And um, so, uh, speaking of the CAN bus on the scope, the second point to this video, and there, there is two points to it. So that is actually a drawing from the, uh, from the SX4 manual there, boys. And it is actually showing you the different modules on the car not all of them on the K-Bus, which is actually the uh, kind of the line that looks like the center line, the one down on the bottom there. And that's the various modules in the car. Um, scan down a little bit here so you can see the legend. 
and you can read for yourself if you're interested which ones are on which. So that actually makes a lot of sense to me. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad I looked into that. It's kind of interesting. At least I thought so. Okay, so I'm, uh, I've reconfigured my pins here, boys. I'm into the uh, pin 6, the can high, and uh, pin 14, can low. Oh, why didn't they configure that other, the other way around so numerically it would make sense? I don't know. That's the Automotive Society engineers, I guess. Uh, common ground, of course, between the two uh, channels. Um, and again, on my scope there, boys, um, I don't want to get too close to the scope because I noticed in previous videos on such a tiny uh, notebook that the screen will pixelate big time. But the point to this is, I've heard time and time again on the on the on the web, the interweb, that the cheapest Pico scope. You can see this is a Pico scope 2000. Uh, it is the cheapest one going, basically 2204 Alpha. Right there's the specs on it. I've heard time and time again that it's no good. You can't see the CAN bus. Um, well, listen, I'm not here to argue with anybody, but I think. Right in front of you is in fact the CAN bus detail. Let me stop it. We'll go back a few frames. So I'm just stepping back a frame until you, we hit something useful. There you go. I don't know. Uh, I can see symmetry there. I can see detail. Um, there's the time base and the... I've actually got it on the 5 volt scale there, boys. Let me just put this to manual so I can prove it to you. Put it back in a play mode. Okay, so five volt scales with 20 microsecond per division uh, time base. Okay, we'll stop it. Step back through the frames till we get one that's got some decent detail. Okay, so there. So as I said, I'm not going to argue with you. But that, to me, I can see in plenty of detail. I've actually got the line thickness on both channels stepped up for video purposes. Um, you can get an even clearer image if you go to a finer uh, line on the on the channels. And um, I don't know. That, that seems pretty good to me. So, to me, uh, you know, I, I, I get it. You know, there's a lot of guys out there who've... How do I put this uh, without offending anybody? Um, let, let's just say that I think is well capable, even at a, dare I say, a professional level, that this would be very, very useful for automotive purposes. I've made videos in the past, guys saying, well, of course it's cheap, it's not an autoscope. Well, what is an autoscope? I'm not really sure what that means to be on automotive scope. I'm not really sure what that means, to be honest. Yes, PicoScope has a has a oscilloscope that is marketed obviously for oscillo for auto, the automotive market. All the settings are there. It makes things easy. There's a, a guided tour. It's a fantastic product. I'm I'm not I'm not saying otherwise. But an oscilloscope's an oscilloscope to me, boys. You know, and um, uh, yeah, I don't I don't want to cause any grief or controversy. That's that's not the point to this video. All I'm saying is. I've heard plenty of people saying that the PicoScope, the cheap 2000 series, is no use uh, because you can't see the CAN bus detail, and there is, and it's in, to me, plenty of useful detail, right? No, it doesn't decode it or anything crazy like that. I mean, of course not. It's, the rig is like $150 Canadian. I don't know, whatever that is in your currency, but of uh, it is plenty useful. So... Yeah, anyway, I don't want to labor the point. That's it, boys. You you can, in fact, see the CAN bus, to me, in plenty of useful detail with even the cheapest of oscilloscopes, or, sorry, the cheapest of picoscopes. And, yeah, maybe there's maybe it's not going to see your, you know, your latest and greatest ultra-fancy Mercedes-Benz or BMW, whatever bus they've got on it. God knows what they use these days. But, yeah, I'm talking about your standard everyday uh, CAN bus, you know, on the standard protocol. I don't know what the numbers are. Go figure it out for yourself. But that's it. There's nothing fancy here, man. These tools are all within the reach of most people. Uh, not everybody, granted, in the world, but uh, most guys that are automotive enthusiasts, even at a hobby level like myself, is is it's pretty affordable, right? It's reasonable, very reasonable indeed. So um, 
yeah, uh, that, I guess we'll leave it at that, boys. That was the point. Uh, a revisit on the K line, and uh, just to make the uh, point about the uh, CAN bus on uh, even the cheapest of picoscopes. Okay, that's good. That's enough. Good. And uh, that's it, boys. I uh, hope everybody's sound in this uh, strange, strange times that we're living through. Um, keep your yourself and your clan sound, boys. That's it. Cheers.